Hey everyone, wanted to continue talking about sensitive info types inside of Microsoft's information protection stack. Um, and specifically, I wanted to talk about what we need to do when the out of box definitions from Microsoft doesn't meet our needs. So for instance, you might have custom data set that you want to protect that's specific to your business and organization. And none of the definitions that Microsoft has meets your needs. Well, what do you do? Uh, well, in that case, what we need to do to protect your medical record number or your custom student ID number or a customer ID, we need to build a custom sensitive info definition and upload it into the system for Microsoft. So that's what I'll walk you through today, how I build them and how you can get started with them. All right, so here we go. First place to start when we want to build a custom sensitive info type is start with the data at hand. Here you can see I have some student IDs that I want to protect, and it's in this spe specific format for this university. It's uh, two letters, a dash, and then five numbers in hand. So what we need to do is we need to start designing a regex to start hitting on this. Um, like we talked about last time, Almost all definitions from Microsoft when it comes to DLP or the sensitive info types start with a regex base and then we layer on top of that. So here we have our data set and let's go ahead and uh, let's open up regex 101 and start building a regex match. I really like this site for doing samples of regex because it's just, it's just a helpful engine on it. So here we go. Let's put in our test data set and start building a match uh, to do this. So the first thing that we see here is we have two letters. And so let's put in, um, a, you know, to, to match that. So we need to start with a uh, bracket that will put in uh, this type of information. And so here you can see I have um, AZ and we're starting to build out this definitions. Um, but you can see here on Regex 101, it's a match here and a match here. So what we need to do is we need to define that it should be two letter match. So let's uh, put a tilde bracket in here, or squiggly bracket, I'm not never sure what to call those. All right, and so we have that. Next, we have a dash. So let's put in our dash in here, and then uh, it looks like we have five digits that we need to do. So again, I'm gonna build a bracket, and in this case, uh, I'm gonna use the special uh, character type known as the, the digit character. So here we put that in and we're starting to build it out. And we're gonna build a, another five characters. And then there we go. So now we have our you know base definitions in here um, and we have it ready to go. And so this is great. However, one of the things you need to think about when you're um, building your definitions is that this is perfect. This is coming from maybe the database system, but it doesn't necessarily line up with how our end users use the data. So even though this is a fantastic definition, it's hitting perfectly on here. What does it do when it encounters the real world of end users using it, right? So let's, let's add in some additional data here to how my end users might actually use their, their data pieces. So in this case, you know, what we see is that end users start typing in things and you know what, maybe they just use an actual uh, a capital here and there. Our current data definition doesn't support that. So let's go modify it to uh, add in that type. So uh, in this case, I am going to add in uh, this original definition only did A through Z. Now let's add in uh, uppercase letters. All right. And then there we go. Now we're uh, uh, matching on if someone does accidental uppercase and uh, letters as well as the rest of the definition. And again, um, what I do is as I'm designing these, I'll go through a couple of different scenarios of what my end users might actually do, right? So in this case, uh, you know, maybe they don't actually do the dash or maybe someone really likes using the period or a star or something along that lines. And so we need to rework our definitions to support the different scenarios that the end user has, right? And so in this case, uh, you know, end users don't always put the dash in. They might put a, uh, you know, a period or something along those lines. 
So in this case, we're gonna modify this regex to support that. Uh, and so the first step is making the, um, the dash optional, right? And so we're gonna declare a capture group in this case, say, hey, you know, this with a question mark at the end means like it could match this, it doesn't have to, and it'll still be a hit on the definition. And so that works for, you know, handling that scenario. But what about the dots and the, you know, the dashes? Well, what we can do in that case is we can use a um, custom non-word character type to make sure we're hitting on that. So that would be a slash W. And then now we can see, you know, we're putting this in place here and it's matching on this definition. So that's pretty good definition there. Um, you know, let's let's do the, the mustard test. Does it actually work in like the real world scenario? Um, so let's type in, you know, how I helped us or uh, one of our employees might actually work with the system. So let me see. Okay, and there we go. So now we are matching on this, right? And this is how we might see someone start emailing this document in and kind of where it goes. Um, and that's pretty good um, definition, I think. And that's at least a place that we'll start with today of building out our data definition. So once we have this regex kind of designed, we need to now build this into the Microsoft Compliance Center. So let's go ahead and open up Compliance Center and we're gonna to go to data classifications and sensitive info types here. And now let's build a custom sensitive info type. So we're just gonna hit that create button and wait for the interface to load up. All right, so now that uh, the create has loaded up, we can start building our sensitive info type. So let's give it a name and a description. and start moving on. Now, the first thing that we need to do is we need to declare out our patterns. So let's go ahead and create this one. And first option that's required is the confidence level in this. So um, you know what, for this definition, let's build a couple different confidence levels so that we can kind of have multiple levels of hit and say accuracy levels. So let's start with a low confidence in here. And now we can go in and add our primary element. So in this case, because we built the regex, let's start with that. You can't always do, you know, keyword lists or functions as well. So uh, for this, I'm going to declare out a uh, the ID of what I'm going to use this regex for so we can reuse this as we go through. And I'm going to grab in the custom regex we made as well. And let's go ahead and hit done. That looks good to me. We're doing stream match. We're not doing any expression validators on this one. Okay. And let's declare this as low confidence and let's not do any supporting elements on this. So this essentially means that anytime that we find that pattern in an email, it's going to hit on this low confidence. And that's pretty good for now. Now let's do uh, some more ones and let's add some accuracy to it. Right, because maybe that pattern might be something that's used in there. We had a lot of options in there. Essentially, it's two letters and then any numbers can hit on that pattern. And we have some complexity to it where we can hit on other things. But let's declare out a medium confidence match in this case. Uh, and so again, we're going to start with a regex. Um, but this time, since we already designed or built it, let's let's go in and we'll choose the list. So we don't have to keep writing all of that, uh, that regex every time. It's also nice if you ever have to modify that one, it's just updates it everywhere that that is used. The good and the bad on that, okay? All right, so we have that student ID picked and let's declare it out. And in this case, let's add some supporting elements. So in this case, if we find in the email that sent out, let's look for a keyword list um, and you know uh, add in that. So we have student keyword and let's add in some things that we would expect to find if uh, around the that that regex 
if someone was actually typing a student keyword. So uh, let's add in student ID, ID, And that's a pretty good list. And you can always add to this and uh, make this uh, more custom to you, add definitions at any time. And here we go, right? And so now this one is looking for, to say it's median confidence, is looking for a student ID. And then within 300 characters of it, we're looking for a keyword list uh, with those kind of out of box definitions that we want to look for. And we can hit create there. And now we have two different patterns. Let's hit next. And what's the recommended confidence level uh, when someone's designing a DLP policy or a um, labeling policy? What's our recommendation that they start with? Uh, in this case, I'm gonna recommend medium confidence because we have a good definition for medium confidence. You know, We think it's gonna eliminate some false positives if they use that, but we'll also tag that and make that lower confidence option available. Let's get hit next and hit create. And then let's do some testings after this. Now that my student ID is created, I can run it through some test scenarios to make sure it's properly working uh, before adding it to a DLP policy. So let's click on this and we'll go through testing real quick. And to aid with that, I have some sample files in here that are just, just text files with some matches. And so here you can see I have one with you know 12 rows of different student types. I have one that uses the keyword to start testing on the, the medium accuracy and so on and so forth. So let's upload those files and uh, see what matches we get and verify. And here we go, it's running our data definition against that document and we'll see how many hits we get. And in fact, 12 unique matches on the low confidence match type. So that's pretty good. Let's test the uh, medium definition one, the one that uses keyword. And that looks good too. We have one doc, one uh, item in here and the keyword were found to bring it up to that medium accuracy, student ID, ID and student, all of those work properly. Um, so that's good. That's We're doing pretty good here. Uh, I wanna show you one scenario that I was playing with that, you know, came up and didn't do a proper match on the medium. Uh, so we kind of kind of learned from each other and our own mistakes here. And so this was one that I made uh, originally to match the keyword. And you'll notice I didn't put a space here in this. And when I upload this now to this test engine, you'll see it only is matching on just the, the ID, the regex piece, and no supporting elements are found. And so that's a, a learning for me on this one. I need to now go into my uh, data definitions and my keyword list and program in like, uh, yeah, maybe someone's gonna put in, uh, forget to put a, a space in there. And maybe we should add just this as a keyword option there where someone doesn't properly tag that and, and program it in. So there you go. Um, we built our own custom sensitive info type with Microsoft. We went through some test scenarios. Uh, now it's ready to be added to your DLP policy for further, further testing. And I typically recommend anytime you build a new sensitive info type, put it into a monitor only policy and run it for a period before you put it into production. You never know all the scenarios that are gonna come up when we start using this, the things that might hit on too aggressively or the things that might not hit on enough. All right, and so you'll need to go through some testing phases with that monitor only policy to build it out. Hope this helps. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out uh, and have a great day.